Okay guys, so this video is kind of a prelude to my experience or my awakening that took place in 2010, but it's also on my documentation of my one and only out-of-body experience that I can recall at least um, in an unawakened state. Um, so my boyfriend at the time had purchased this salvia that was sold legally. I don't believe it is anymore. And it's not that K2 stuff or spice or whatever. It's a natural plant or herb. And I guess the Mayans also used it to connect to source. Um, and it, it is a, a hallucinogen. But I, I had experimented with others in the past. I tried acid in high school. I've eaten mushrooms. Um, I've had other experiences. But... Nothing like this. I was not expecting this um, at all. And he basically, he smoked it first because we figured we would need a babysitter. And he his experience was pretty dull. He, like, he acted like he was a bull. He'd, like, shuffle his feet, and then he'd, like, ram to the other side of the room, and then he'd turn around and shuffle his feet again and do the same thing. But he was definitely stuck in some kind of trance. Like, he wasn't there... Um, I couldn't shake him out of it. The It took about, like, his trip, I guess. It, seemed to, it only lasted a few minutes, maybe five at the most. And then I went. It was my turn. I smoked a whole bowl of that. And we were sitting at the computer desk in the basement, and I was in my computer chair right in front of the computer monitor at the time. Because I was, we were, I was trying to record our experience on webcam <laughs> so I could share it if I wanted to. And I, I still have that evidence somewhere um, on my desktop, probably at my parents' house. Anyway, um, all of a sudden, like, a, it looked like a spider web came out of, shot out of the computer monitor and started, like, it took hold of my arms. Like, it became one with me and it was, like, swallowing up my whole body. And it was like a white, it was a bright white web. And it became one with me and the whole chair was like eating me up. I fe it felt like a scene from Spider-Man, okay? And then uh, all of a sudden, like I'm assuming my eyes were still open. I don't think they rolled back. I don't think they were closed. I don't think they rolled back in my head. But all of a sudden, like, I know I was still sitting in the chair, but I wasn't there anymore. Like. I was in a different, like, when I came to in this other reality, I was at, it was, I was at a computer desk, but it wasn't my computer desk, and I had this overwhelming sensation that I was going to get in trouble, like I was going to get caught, like my parents were going to come bust me, I was an, an adult grown woman at the time, in my own place, my parents not living with me, but I had this fear that my parents were going to catch me, or I was going to get in trouble. And I would come back to this reality, you know, like all of a sudden, like my eyes are open here and I'm back at my, I'm at my own computer desk and I'm still like tripping out. My boyfriend's there and then I'm, I'm like, help me kind of before I roll back out of this reality again. And, and then all of a sudden, at some point I feel like I'm just, I'm falling, falling down this tunnel, just like Alice in Wonderland. And I'm just, I'm falling down this hole or tunnel of some kind. And it feels so real to the point, like, I get up, I know I get got up out of the computer chair and, like, plopped myself on the couch in order to land in this other reality. I wanted, I, like, felt like I needed to brace myself and have, like, the soft landing. And how is this legal? Like, there's no way people can just, like, smoke this after work and, be, like, no. Like, what was that? I've never experienced an out-of-body experience like that before. I don't know what happened, where I was, what the hell that was. Um, but it, it felt really similar to that scene from to the scene from Lucy, which didn't even come out until 2014. And I had had this salvia experience. Uh, it was 2009 or 2010, just before my awakening. Because I do feel like I crossed into some kind of dimension. Like, I feel like maybe I wasn't supposed to have tapped into that. And maybe that's how they found me and made contact with me, these angels. I'm not sure. 
But then my best friend comes over later. I'm like, because I, I was telling him, oh, my gosh, you got to try this stuff. And I, and it was for selfish purposes. I really wanted to see him trip out and see what kind of experience he would have. But I, I insisted that he come over and try it. And he sat there and smoked bowl after bowl after bowl. And nothing happened. <laughs> I'm like, and that experience alone just, like, scared the shit out of me. And I not interested in ever trying it again um that's how out of this world it was and i was not expecting that at all again uh, the, the fact that i experienced the web coming out of the computer and becoming one with me like and then that then when that lucy movie came out like i freaked i freaked out because I was like, what? No way. And then between between all the, the synchronicities and the parallels and these angels making contact with me in 2010 and my awakening and then me finding out that I experienced this kundalini and um, this, ener this event coming, just everything put together. It's just, I mean, it sounds like a fantasy fairy tale, but it's really happening to me and I is it, just falling in my lap and I don't know what to do with it like because they talk about the Christ consciousness consciousness they said it's my it's like my consciousness is my heart sweeping over the planet because of the sacrifice that I made because I do love humanity and I see the good and beauty and everybody and I'm kind to everyone even when I'm having a shitty day and I'm always like I guess like somehow these angels have been analyzing every thought and feeling I've had and like they definitely let me know in 2010 that they've been by my side since birth and that the reason I was experiencing all of this was because I always stayed true to myself. I believed in myself when nobody else didn't. I haven't had the greatest life. I have had a lot of ups and downs and struggles that I had to overcome. Um, a lot of my family is riddled with anxiety and depression and they choose to live in a space of playing the victim. And I just choose to conquer any anxieties that I had I, I, or fears. I just chose to face them to co to overcome. Like, I want to be I don't want to be dependent on other people. I wanted to be independent. I, I know that um, my brain functioned at a high level since a young child, I, I was a weirdo. I was an outcast because I didn't go along with the crowd. Um, I did stand up for the kid that was getting bullied. I was able to rotate throughout, you know, the various circles in high school because I could relate to everybody that easily. Like, I could easily maneuver through. I, I, I've always been able to make friends easily. I'm the one at the grocery store that gets approached by strangers or in the waiting room or the DMV, you know. And I'm not, I, I, I'm not that person, like, I don't like attention, like, I sing a lot, and I have a pretty good voice, but I could never imagine being famous or being a star, I don't want attention, I don't want cameras on me, that's when my anxiety really sparks up, and I think that's for a reason too, because in order for me to be who I am, I'd have to be a person that can easily remove themselves from their ego, or remove their ego from themselves and I think the reason I'm struggling with my higher self or this soul that I possess is because I don't feel like other people will accept me or my experience my personal experiences because of their own ego <laughs> like but my angels really wanted me to come out with my own personal experience now is the time for divine feminine I don't know where this is all going, um, but stay tuned. I have plenty more to talk about. <laughs>